Christmas is only two days away, and I didn't even realize it. And I was talking to another podcaster about this feeling. It feels weird because it's something that was such a big part of my childhood, but I guess it's now a sign that I'm getting older because I didn't even realize how quickly it was coming up. Now, am I still going to have fun on Christmas and it's going to be a great day? Yes, but it's a little sad that I didn't recognize how close it was. This is a similar feeling to how I feel about The Witcher. The TV series just dropped and I've watched it all. And I was really excited leading up to it. I have read six of the books and liked the story fairly well. Haven't played the video games. But my overall take on the TV show was, was it something that I liked? Yes, like Christmas. It's a fantasy TV show. It's done fairly well. It's a large budget. I'm going to like it. However, I was a little disappointed that it didn't have the magic that I was expecting, like the magic of Christmas when I was younger. Now that said, welcome to Phantology Podcast. This is Steven, just on my own today. And I'm reviewing The Witcher, the books and the TV show. Well, six of the books that I've read. The Witcher is a Polish, it's an adaptation of a Polish uh, series of novels written by, this is my best attempt here, Andrzej Sapkowski, I believe. Sorry about that, but I think that's close. And translated into English. Before I go too far, content warning on this. This show and the books, to a lesser extent, have about all the content you can handle. So in watching the TV show, I actually used a service called VidAngel. VidAngel is an awesome way of watching some of the R or TVMA rated shows, but going in and removing the content that you don't want to see. Um, Language, sex, nudity can all be edited out pretty easily. Some people might say, well, that's the stuff that I like, no judgment, but don't use VidAngel, just watch it on Netflix. Um, I've also heard people express worry that doing so would remove some of the key plot elements. To an extent, that's true. I think you can still get almost everything. There were two times that I can think of in watching it that I did have to go online and read a quick summary of what happened because there were some parts that skipped through where characters were talking or things were happening, and there was also content happening at the same time, so I missed it. That said, let's go into a bit of a review of the series. I'm going to review the TV series and the books to the extent that I've read them. I guess this is mostly focused on the TV show since that just came out. So like I said, I've read six six of the books, two of the short stories, and then four of the six in the actual series. I like the books. I actually liked them more after watching the show, which is kind of an interesting sentiment. I'll talk more about that in a second. As far as the books go, the characters I thought were really strong, Geralt, Yennefer, Ciri, are all written really well in the books, are all very strong. Characters that have originality and motivations that make sense. The writing is really solid, actually really good. Some of the, the strongest prose that I've read which is really interesting since it was originally written in Polish and translated over. So I guess the author and the translator did a fantastic job. I have no idea how that works because a lot of the nuances of language you think would be difficult to translate over. Nevertheless, this was the prose was really awesome in these books. However, the plot is all over the place for me in these books. There's a few things that I don't like. One, there's too many weird names and places. I understand originally written in Polish, so I'll give it a bit of a pass there. However, there's also no map. There are fan-made maps based off the video games that you can find online, but there's no map given to you. And a lot of these places, which there are many of, are briefly seen in the books and the show. So you have no idea where they are, what the culture is like. There are many books that do a much better job of this. For example, Wheel of Time. I know there's 14 books there, but come on, there's six Witcher books. You think you'd be able to see a bit more of the different settings and get a sense for what the cultures are, but when I read places, I just kind of remember, oh, that's that one place with that one king, but I don't really have any idea of what is different about one kingdom to another, other than Sintra and Nilfgaard. Also, I just thought it was the books were a bit boring. There are a lot of parts where I don't understand the significance of them. There's a lot of chit-chat as we're traveling around, a lot of things that maybe the author thinks are funny that don't quite land super well, so not a whole lot of action. Again, I've read six of the books. I haven't been blown away. There's no real epic scale 
conflict going on like there are in a lot of other fantasy books. And when I read a book, I just like to have more excitement. It should be an entertaining thing, right? So that's the those are the books. Let's go into the TV show. So again, no spoilers here. I thought again in the TV show, the characters are really solid. I thought the best character was Jennifer, probably because we got her backstory and we're able to really see her motivations. Geralt was also really strong, although we didn't see his backstory as much. We saw some of the, the internal conflicts that he goes through. Even though he's basically uh, chiseled out of a block of stone, he does have some emotions and we see a lot of it. Siri was a decent character, although I did not like how her plot line went in the books. I thought a lot of her parts were her parts were very boring, and we didn't have a sense of what was actually what the significance of them were. If you hadn't read the books or played the video games, you'd really have no idea what the point of this character was that was taking up so much of so much of the time on screen. And I also liked Jaskier. He's dandelion in the books, and I assume the video games. But I thought he was funny and added quite a bit to the story. I thought the settings in the book were really cool and helped to lock down a lot of the book ideas. I think this is one of the strengths of the visual medium. You can actually see the settings and you don't have to spend the time describing them. There were uh, some pretty cool settings. For example, the magical school that I do not remember the name of because there are way too many strange names was really cool with the, the two fortresses with a bridge spanning these islands. That was a cool visual. I thought the Sodden Hill fortress was cool and just in general all of the taverns and and streets and cities had this kind of grungy feel to it that made it seem really realistic there were some cool action scenes and some not so cool action scenes for example in the first episode there's an awesome scene where Geralt hits an arrow out of the sky with his sword and then proceeds to take down like 10 people it was kind of like a daredevil style where it slowed down and Geralt was moving really quickly and just dispatching people right and left. That was really cool. However, we didn't see too much more of that style of fighting through the rest of the series. There was more action, but it was more kind of your typical like hit swords, hit swords back and forth, and then eventually you take down the guy. Not quite as entertaining or creative. The special effects were okay, which seems weird considering the budget size that Netflix had for the show. There were some monsters that looked really cool, like the Kikimora in episode one and the Striga in episode three looked very realistic. However, the horned beast in episode two that I do not remember the name of looked really ridiculous. It looked it was so low budget and I was not impressed by the look of that creature. Also, a lot of the magic did not look especially cool. There was just kind of shimmering air stuff happening and fire or energy being thrown around, but it looked a little second rate. I thought also the dragons in episode six were very unimpressive to me. One of them basically looked like a puppet that you'd see in an 80s movie, and the other one was small, and I mean, compared to the Game of Thrones dragons, they were just nothing. And it's really not fair to compare this show to Game of Thrones. It's not trying to do that, even though every review that I've seen compares it to Game of Thrones. It's obvious that fantasy shows... Now that there's a lot of them coming out, they're all going to be compared to Game of Thrones, but this, in my opinion, that's not fair. Game of Thrones had a much big, bigger budget and much more to pull from. However, I do think the special effects could have been on par, on par considering the amount of money Netflix did have, and they spent money in other ways that are pretty obvious. I also think the show would have benefited from a map. I already talked about that in the books, and maybe they felt like putting a map in would be a direct copy of the Game of Thrones opening sequence. However, that does a lot for Game of Thrones because you can see exactly where the places are and non-book readers really just lock it in. All that I know from watching the TV show is that Sintra is in the north, Nilfgaard is in the south, there's a place called Sodden Hill, and there's a river called the Yaruga that goes through there that separates the north and the south. And honestly, that's probably a lot more than most people are going to be able to say because I've read the books, and that's all I can come up with. So that is a statement to the the necessity for the show to explain more of its setting. Another interesting choice that the show made was its timeline. So the first four or five episodes, there are several different timelines happening at the same time. There's Geralt's timeline, there's Jennifer's timeline, and there is Ciri slash Sintra's timeline. So Sintra starts present day. Yennefer starts mm, somewhere between 50 to 100 years prior, and Geralt starts somewhere in between. 
but the show never explains that this is happening ever like you just have to pick up from clues which become fairly obvious by the end but i think it could have benefited from just a flash of a year on the screen when when the show is starting so you know what's happening when i get it that you don't want a tv show to be too easy to follow but at the same time i think this is a little much and there's just quite a high learning curve for the tv show so you're expecting new people to understand places names and a timeline i think that's a little much i understand why they chose to do it and i think there were some pros of it it really helped to tie together a lot of the loose plot threads from the books but at the same time i also think it could have been done just as well if we just went straight through from past to present with a little bit of mix-up just to make it flow but at the same time i think it was a little excessive the way they did the timeline okay so let's talk spoilers so the tv show covers the first two books the collection of short stories first book is called the last wish the next book is called the sword of destiny and then it covers a little bit of the back story of book three which is the first book in the actual series. So the first two are a collection of short stories with Geralt. The first book called The Blood of Elves is the first of six that actually goes through more of a a typical series style. Episode one I thought was a solid intro into Geralt. You saw him do some cool sword fighting, some cool witcher stuff. It was a nice story with Renfri, who is a mage slash princess who's misunderstood. It's similar to snow white i think he adapted the snow white tale for this one and it's really well done it's a really nice intro into the series you also got some pieces of information about sintra so you see present day sintra that's just being overthrown by nilfgaard and then in future episodes you'll see more and more of the backstory for sintra and understand why it's important and why siri is important episode two is also really strong although a little slow and i guess when i say a little strong i mean from a series perspective as a whole, it is strong, but when you're first watching the first two episodes, you might not get the point quite as much. Episode two is Yennefer, introduction to Yennefer and her background. I thought she was an amazing character. You really understood her motivations and a little bit of some of the tragedy of her life. And you get that from her backstory here. The part with Geralt here wasn't quite as good. It's more of a setup, I believe, for season two, where it's going to get more into the events of the blood of elves so you have Geralt taking on some elves and some creature actually i think it's called a sylvie or sylvan that was the terribly animated creature that i mentioned before and this is a little boring and you really don't understand the significance of it at all unless you look at it through a episode or a season two lens which obviously hasn't come out yet and i'm assuming we'll get more into the elves Episode 3 was really good, probably my favorite of the season, one of the one of the tops for sure. So episode 3 has Geralt taking on a creature called Astria, and this is a similar story to Sleeping Beauty, or another classical princess story. So the princess has been locked away in this castle, but a twist, she's also a vampire-like monster that has actually killed witchers in the past. So a pretty dangerous creature, cool fighting, cool fight scene. Geralt does some cool Witcher stuff, and overall just a cool episode. Episode 4, you get backstory into Sintra. This is a really critical episode for understanding what's actually going on. So episode 4 has Ciri's parents, Dooney and Bavetta. You see how they came to be married, Dooney was originally cursed, and Bavetta is revealed to have some kind of elemental power at her disposal like she's this unstable force of magic which then will transfer on to siri and is the reason why siri is so significant you also get a you also understand why Geralt and siri are connected because Geralt is there at the same time kind of saves the day after a lot of the action of the betrothal and fighting and and Geralt reluctantly invokes the law of surprise which will tie him to siri in the future Although, unfortunately, we do not see much of that at all this season. Episode 4 also had some strong Yennefer character stuff. So, at this point, she has gone through the school. She has transformed from a hunchback to a beautiful mage. And she's been working now doing what she thought she would love and what she thought would bring her happiness in life. It has not. And she wants to have a child 
but unfortunately because of the transformation she went through she is unable to conceive children so you get a sense of the tragic turn for unhappiness her life has taken and i thought it was pretty strong i thought the actress did a really good job of portraying yennefer episode five is pretty fun this is another one of the short stories that finally brings Geralt and Yennefer together. In this episode, Jaskier has, well, we think that Jaskier has foolishly unleashed a djinn and been cursed. So Geralt brings him to Yennefer, who he just comes upon by chance because she's in the area. She heals Jaskier, and then the together they deal with the djinn. There is a lot of content in this episode, so this is the episode where you might miss some things if you're using VidAngel. But this is how Geralt and Yennefer first come into contact with each other, develop some really nice chemistry, and ultimately this episode is very important for the fate that's going to bind them both together. Episode 6 saw Geralt and Yennefer again together, going on another adventure to take down a dragon. I thought this was a really nice episode. Anytime Geralt and Yennefer were together, there was some really nice chemistry, and you saw more of Geralt's actual human side than his rough exterior that he displays for the rest of the season. So overall, I thought the season started a little slow, picked up steam through episodes four, five, three, four, five, and six, and then unfortunately took a bit of a nosedive at the end. Episode seven was entirely unnecessary. It was just a recap of everything that had happened in the timeline. So it brought those of you who didn't know what was going on up to speed. This is my main criticism of the timeline choice. I thought if they hadn't done this, they easily could have got rid of this episode, added in some more interesting action, and made it all tie together a bit more. What you did see in episode 7 was uh, a catch-up for Sintra, so now we understand exactly the stakes here, who Ciri is being pursued by, and you catch Geralt up to the events, so you see that Geralt is actually there in Sintra when they're taken down by Nilfgaard. Episode 8, I thought, had a lot of potential to tie everything together. This is the last episode of the season. However, I was very disappointed by this episode. So first of all, Geralt is hardly in the action at all. At the very beginning, he's looking for Ciri. He is bitten by some kind of zombie creature and almost killed. So he's basically just waylaid on a cart traveling around for the entirety of the episode. But the rest of the episode is all fighting and action, which is where you want your main Witcher character who is known for fighting and doing cool things, you want him in the action, yet he's not. I thought this was a very poor choice. I understand that this is what happens in the books, and Geralt isn't a part of this fighting, but I really wish that they would have split from the book material. I mentioned before that I thought the book plot was a bit lame, and the books prevented a lot of the characters from being together as much as they should be. I thought when the characters were together, especially Geralt and Yennefer, they had a lot of chemistry, and I really would have liked to see Geralt fighting at the, bo- at the Battle of Sodden Hill, so very disappointed by that. Now, the battle itself, I thought was also disappointing. We didn't get much of a sense for what was really happening. We just saw several different one-off action sequences where different mages were fighting different troops of Nilfgaardian soldiers. Yennefer was kind of directing it all, but I thought the action wasn't that cool. And at the end, when they ultimately won and repelled the Nilfgaardians, I was just kind of left wondering how did they do that because it seemed like Nilfgaard had things wrapped up. There were also way too many random mage characters that were introduced. These guys are going to be significant for Season 2 and future events, but I, if I hadn't read the books, I'd have no idea who these people were, and I wouldn't care about them. And I think that's one of the main weaknesses when you see characters on screen that you don't care about that's really gonna that's really gonna make it hard for viewers to connect with the tv show and connect with the characters so diverting from the book material more like i said the book material adds so many random characters and places and events i think they could have really cut down a lot of that stuff tied up the action more into the main characters and still had a great story they chose not to do that they chose to stick to the book material and i thought ultimately that was the main weakness of the tv show So overall, above average show, it's being unfairly compared to Game of Thrones. It didn't quite have the budget, it didn't quite have the special effects, and it didn't quite have the cohesive storyline that the Game of Thrones source material had. So really my main criticism is of the books. I think if the books were more of a cohesive storyline, then 
the TV show would have been better as well. However, I think the TV show also could have made a bold slash risky decision to divert from more of the source material and make a TV show that actually makes sense as a visual medium. They didn't do that. They did a little bit with some of the timeline things, but ultimately it was left lacking. I'm really hoping that some of the other TV shows that are coming out soon, like Wheel of Time or the new Lord of the Rings prequel series, will do more of this and divert from the book material when it makes sense in order to make a story that's more compelling on the TV screen come to life. I understand that's a risky decision, but I think as a TV writer, you need to be able to come up with a story that will make sense on the screen and not just stick to the written material. I'm also a little concerned about future season seasons just because of Netflix's budget here. They don't nearly have the budget that Amazon is going to throw at their series. So hopefully they're able to modify the plot, bring our characters together, take advantage of the chemistry they have on camera, and produce a nice season two, even though they don't quite have the budget that some of these other big fantasy, sh fantasy shows are going to have. Okay, that is my review of The Witcher, and I am now going to get back to reading Lycanius Book 3, The Light of All That Falls. I'm hoping to wrap that up by the end of the year and jump into 2020 with some more podcasts.